Hazardous waste is waste that has substantial or potential threats to public health or the environment. Characteristic hazardous wastes are materials that are known or tested to exhibit one or more of the following hazardous traits Ignitability Reactivity Corrosivity Toxicity Listed hazardous wastes are materials specifically listed by regulatory authorities as hazardous wastes which are from non-specific sources, specific sources, or discarded chemical products. Hazardous wastes may be found in different physical states such as gaseous, liquids, or solids. A hazardous waste is a special type of waste because it cannot be disposed of by common means like other by-products of our everyday lives. Depending on the physical state of the waste, treatment and solidification processes might be required. Topic. Worldwide Worldwide, the United Nations Environment Programme UNEP, estimated that more than 400 million tons of hazardous wastes are produced universally each year, mostly by industrialized countries Schmidt, 1999. About 1% 1 of this is shipped across international boundaries, with the majority of the transfers occurring between countries in the Organization for the Economic Cooperation and Development OECD, Kruger, 1999. One of the reasons for industrialized countries to ship the hazardous waste to industrializing countries for disposal is the rising cost of disposing of hazardous waste in the home country. Topic. Regulatory history Topic. In the United States Topic. Resource Conservation and Recovery Act Hazardous wastes are wastes with properties that make them dangerous or potentially harmful to human health or the environment. Hazardous wastes can be liquids, solids, contained gases, or sludges. They can be by-products of manufacturing processes or simply discarded commercial products, like cleaning fluids or pesticides. In regulatory terms, RCRA hazardous wastes are wastes that appear on one of the four hazardous wastes lists F list, K list, P list, or U list, or exhibit at least one of the following four characteristics, ignitability, corrosivity, reactivity, or toxicity. In the U.S., hazardous wastes are regulated under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act RCRA, subtitle C. By definition, EPA determined that some specific wastes are hazardous. These wastes are incorporated into lists published by the agency. These lists are organized into three categories, F-list non-specific source wastes found in the regulations at 40 CFR 261.31, K-list source-specific wastes found in the regulations at 40 CFR 261.32, and P-list and the U-list discarded commercial chemical products found in the regulations at 40 CFR 261. 61.33. RCRA's record keeping system helps to track the life cycle of hazardous waste and reduces the amount of hazardous waste illegally disposed. Topic: <laughs> Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act. The Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act was enacted in 1980. The primary contribution of CERCLA was to create a «superfund» 
and provide for the cleanup and remediation of closed and abandoned hazardous waste sites. CERCLA addresses historic releases of hazardous materials, but does not specifically manage hazardous wastes. <laughs> hazardous waste in the U.S. In the United States, the treatment, storage, and disposal of hazardous waste are regulated under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act RCRA. Hazardous wastes are defined under RCRA in 40 CFR 261 where they are divided into two major categories, characteristic wastes and listed wastes. The requirements of the RCRA apply to all the companies that generate hazardous waste as well as those companies that store or dispose hazardous waste in the United States. Many types of businesses generate hazardous waste, dry cleaners, automobile repair shops, hospitals, exterminators, and photo processing centers may all generate hazardous waste. Some hazardous waste generators are larger companies such as chemical manufacturers, electroplating companies, and oil refineries. A U.S. facility that treats, stores, or disposes of hazardous waste must obtain a permit for doing so under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. Generators and transporters of hazardous waste must meet specific requirements for handling, managing, and tracking waste. Through the RCRA, Congress directed the United States Environmental Protection Agency EPA, to create regulations to manage hazardous waste. Under this mandate, the EPA developed strict requirements for all aspects of hazardous waste management including the treatment, storage, and disposal of hazardous waste. In addition to these federal requirements, states may develop more stringent requirements that are broader in scope than the federal regulations. Furthermore, RCRA allows states to develop regulatory programs that are at least as stringent as RCRA and, after review by EPA, the states may take over responsibility for the implementation of the requirements under RCRA. Most states take advantage of this authority, implementing their own hazardous waste programs that are at least as stringent, and in some cases are more stringent than the federal program. <laughs> hazardous waste mapping systems The U.S. government provides several tools for mapping hazardous wastes to particular locations. These tools also allow the user to view additional information. TOXMAP is a Geographic Information System GIS, service from the Division of Specialized Information Services of the United States National Library of Medicine NLM, that uses maps of the United States to help users visually explore data from the United States Environmental Protection Agency's EPA, Toxics Release Inventory and Superfund Basic Research Program. This is a resource funded by the U.S. federal government. TOXMAP's Chemical and Environmental Health Information is taken from NLM's Toxicology Data Network, ToxNet, PubMed, and other authoritative sources. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, Where You Live. One allows users to select a region from a map to find information about Superfund sites in that region. Topic: <laughs> Universal wastes. Universal wastes are a special category of hazardous wastes that, in the U.S., generally pose a lower threat relative to other hazardous wastes are ubiquitous and produced in very large quantities by a large number of generators, some of the most common. 
Universal wastes are fluorescent light bulbs, some specialty batteries, e.g., lithium or lead containing batteries, cathode ray tubes, and mercury containing devices. Universal wastes are subject to somewhat less stringent regulatory requirements. Small quantity generators of universal wastes may be classified as conditionally exempt small quantity generators. CESQGs, which release them from some of the regulatory requirements for the handling and storage hazardous wastes. Universal wastes must still be disposed of properly. For more information, see Overview of Requirements for Conditionally Exempt Small Quantity Generators. Topic: <laughs> Household Hazardous Waste. Household hazardous waste HHW, also referred to as domestic hazardous waste or home-generated special materials, is a waste that is generated from residential households. HHW only applies to waste coming from the use of materials that are labeled for and sold for home use. Waste generated by a company or at an industrial setting is not HHW. The following list includes categories often applied to HHW. It is important to note that many of these categories overlap and that many household wastes can fall into multiple categories. Paints and solvents. Automotive wastes, used motor oil, antifreeze, etc. Pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, etc. Mercury containing wastes, thermometers, switches, fluorescent lighting, etc. Electronics, computers, televisions, cell phones, aerosols, propane cylinders, caustics, cleaning agents, refrigerant containing appliances, some specialty batteries, e.g., lithium, nickel cadmium, or button cell batteries. Ammunition Radioactive wastes Some home smoke detectors are classified as radioactive waste because they contain very small amounts of radioactive isotope americium, c. Disposing of smoke detectors. <laughs> Disposal of hazardous waste Historically, some hazardous wastes were disposed of in regular landfills. This resulted in unfavorable amounts of hazardous materials seeping into the ground. These chemicals eventually entered to natural hydrologic systems. Many landfills now require countermeasures against groundwater contamination. For example, a barrier has to be installed along the foundation of the landfill to contain the hazardous substances that may remain in the disposed waste. Currently, hazardous wastes must often be stabilized and solidified in order to enter a landfill and must undergo different treatments in order to stabilize and dispose of them. Most flammable materials can be recycled into industrial fuel. Some materials with hazardous constituents can be recycled, such as lead acid batteries. Recycling Some hazardous wastes can be recycled into new products. Examples may include lead acid batteries or electronic circuit boards. When heavy metals in these types of ashes go through the proper treatment, they could bind to other pollutants and convert them into easier to dispose solids, or they could be used as pavement filling. Such treatments reduce the level of threat of harmful chemicals, like fly and bottom ash, while also recycling the safe product. There is a recycling center facility in Oxnard, CA. The city does not charge for any hazardous materials being disposed of, but there is a limit to how much you can bring per month. 
Other than hazardous waste, the city also allows you to dispose of electronic waste, light bulbs, and batteries. Portland cement Another commonly used treatment is cement-based solidification and stabilization. Cement is used because it can treat a range of hazardous wastes by improving physical characteristics and decreasing the toxicity and transmission of contaminants. The cement produced is categorized into five different divisions, depending on its strength and components. This process of converting sludge into cement might include the addition of pH adjustment agents, phosphates, or sulfur reagents to reduce the settling or curing time, increase the compressive strength, or reduce the leachability of contaminants. Topic. Incineration, destruction and waste to energy Hazardous waste may be «destroyed», for example, by incinerating them at a high temperature, flammable wastes can sometimes be burned as energy sources. For example, many cement kilns burn hazardous wastes like used oils or solvents. Today, incineration treatments not only reduce the amount of hazardous waste, but also generate energy from the gases released in the process. It is known that this particular waste treatment releases toxic gases produced by the combustion of byproduct or other materials which can affect the environment. However, current technology has developed more efficient incinerator units that control these emissions to a point where this treatment is considered a more beneficial option. There are different types of incinerators which vary depending on the characteristics of the waste. Starved air incineration is another method used to treat hazardous wastes. Just like in common incineration, burning occurs, however controlling the amount of oxygen allowed proves to be significant to reduce the amount of harmful byproducts produced. Starved air incineration is an improvement of the traditional incinerators in terms of air pollution. Using this technology, it is possible to control the combustion rate of the waste and therefore reduce the air pollutants produced in the process. Topic: <laughs> Hazardous waste landfill, sequestering, isolation, etc. Hazardous waste may be sequestered in an hazardous waste landfill or permanent disposal facility. In terms of hazardous waste, a landfill is defined as a disposal facility or part of a facility where hazardous waste is placed or on land and which is not a pile, a land treatment facility, a surface impoundment, an underground injection well, a salt dome formation, a salt bed formation, an underground mine, a cave, or a corrective action management unit 40 CFR Topic. Pyrolysis Some hazardous waste types may be eliminated using pyrolysis in an ultra-high temperature electrical arc, in inert conditions to avoid combustion. This treatment method may be preferable to high temperature incineration in some circumstances such as in the destruction of concentrated organic waste types, including PCBs, pesticides and other persistent organic pollutants. See also Topic. External links The U.S. National Library of Medicine Hazardous Substances Data Bank HSDB. Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry 
The EPA's Hazardous Waste Page The U.S. EPA's Hazardous Waste Cleanup Information System Waste Management – A Half-Century of Progress, a report by the EPA Alumni Association <laughs>